Hey there, Booksmiths. I'm Angie, and welcome back to the channel. I had something else planned for today's video, but OpenAI decided to release a new bottle. So, of course, we have to stop everything that we're doing and take a look immediately. We're actually going to be looking at GPT 4 O, O stands for Omni, and see what it can do since I haven't had time to test it yet. But before we get started, I wanted to make a quick announcement for everyone who offered to beta test my first sample codex for Novel Crafter. This is Cypher Shadows, which is a codex based on the Lester Dent fiction formula. You should have received an email with the link this morning. And if you didn't, if you weren't already signed up, I'll be sure to leave a link in the video description below where you can go ahead and get signed up. I'll send out an, an email again tomorrow. Okay, here we are back on OpenAI's website. And if you come here and click on the spring update, you can actually watch the video where they announced GPT 4.0. And they also showed quite a bit about what it's able to do. There are some articles here as well that you can read more. And they're supposed to be giving us a lot more capabilities for people who have a free account for ChatGPT. So again, you can go through and look through here. I also went ahead and I pulled up the pricing. So GPT 4.0 is uh, multimodal, like some of the other versions before, but it's supposed to be much faster. And you can see that input is $5 per million tokens. Output is $15 per million tokens. And if you come down here to Turbo, you can see that it is half the cost because ChatGPT Turbo was $10 per million tokens for input and output was $30 per million token. So this is only if you're using the API, which a lot of us are using Novel Crafter, so we will be using uh, the API and uh, 128,000 contacts window and the knowledge cutoff is October 2023. Let's see, 128. So it has the same context window. And it is actually, this was April 2023 was the cutoff for the knowledge. So we're going to go into uh, ChatGPT and we're going to play with it today. I have spoken to Space Motion, who is the developer for Novel Crafter. And she said that it will be available in Novel Crafter for sure tomorrow. She had some more testing and stuff that she wanted to do. So I've opted not to show you anything in Novel Crafter today. We will go and we'll play in there tomorrow and hopefully I have some fun stuff to share with you then. Okay, here we are in ChatGBT. Now I looked in my husband's chat GPT account. He has the free account and I saw that it wasn't available for him yet. I do know that they are rolling some of the four features out to the free users. Uh, I am a member of chat GPT pro. So again, that's why I have access to it. So you can see if you come down and look here at the different models, we've got the ChatGPT 4.0, the newest and most advanced model, ChatGPT 4, which is actually Turbo. And then we also have a 3.5 here, which is actually 3.5 Turbo. We, they've also added this ability here to have a temporary chat. If memory serves, the temporary chat is not going to be saved to your account. They won't be included in any of the training. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring to your attention is it says up here, it says memory off. I have turned off my memory and there is a reason that I have turned off my memory. I will come down here to my name. I'll come up here to custom, sorry, settings. And if I come here to personalization, my custom instructions are off. Anytime I'm doing any kind of prompting, unless I'm doing it as a specific pen name because I have some pen name custom instructions. I'll occasionally put in there. I usually keep custom instructions off. Plan to use one of the Mira Gold templates today. So we're going to play with that. But I also have memory turned off. The reason for this is I have learned that memory is, it has very much a selective memory. It remembers what it wants to remember, not necessarily what you think it should remember. So I found myself in the middle of working on a project and then went and looked at my memory and saw it saved a lot of stuff for this project. Now, had I turned my memory off, it would have saved from that project. I'm really concerned about going, and I've had this happen with custom instructions. I go and change and work on something else. And then 
all of the memory or the custom instruction is then influencing the next thing that we're trying to work on. So for me, for right now, I've got memory off only because it's annoying and it only remembers what it wants to remember. It doesn't really remember anything that at least that I have seen that's been all that helpful. And you can only use it in like one aspect of your life. So if you want it to remember like personal things, then you're not going to want to use your memory when you're doing any kind of writing task. So for those of you with ChatGPT Pro, that is my spiel about memory and why I don't like it. Okay, they have made quite a bit of advancements in the uh, multimedia. So we're going to start with some images. So I'll just upload some images or I'll ask it to create some images. And then we're going to go from there. We'll play with one of the Marigold templates and then we're going to call it a day. Let's see. I'm going to give it this image that I created, I think, in Mid Journey. And let me. I need to move my microphone because it's in the way. Please give me a story. Actually, give me five story ideas based on this image. Okay. This really weird random shirt idea. Sure, here are five story ideas based on the image you provided. The guardians of the celestial tree. We've got in a futuristic city hidden within a magical forest lies a mysterious tree glowing with ethereal light. Uh, okay, we got the stairway to a, a, another realm. Whispers of the luminescent tree. The moonlit pathway. And echoes of the forgotten civilization. Archaeologists uncover a forgotten civilization buried beneath a modern metropolis. Okay, that's interesting. So let's look down here so we can actually have it read out loud to us. Now, I've actually got it to where it's not taking any kind of computer audio. So maybe another time. You could also copy this. You can regenerate. You can tell it's a bad response. And what is this? You can actually change model. Oh, how interesting. Okay. Fancy pants. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's just pick one. We'll go with three. Whispers of the luminescent tree. Let's see what it has to say. Please tell me more about three. Okay, so it is got a, a title, obviously. Synopsis. Oops, it's going a little fast for me. In a dystopian future where nature has been almost entirely eradicated by industrial expansion and pollution, the remnants of humanity live in sprawling, decaying megacities. The air is thick with smog and the soil is barren. Amid this desolation, a group of ro uh, rebels known as Green Seekers have dedicated their lives to finding a way to restore the natural world. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. These aren't AI names. Oh my goodness. This is, I have never heard of some of these names. But that's pretty amazing. Plot. It gave us, let's see, is this three acts? Four acts. So it gave us a four act plot. Interesting. Okay. And an epilogue as well. So a new dawn. Okay. Very interesting. I wonder what it would look like if we were to use Katie Spy on this and see what it can do. Uh, I know I said I was going to do multimedia first. Let's do one more of those and then we will pop over into Katie Spy and we will see what happens with that. Okay. Let's just go back up here, create a new chat. And let me grab an image. Okay. We are going to grab a book cover that I made not too long ago. And we're going to ask it to give us a pitch premise for this book cover. So please give me a pitch hook premise for the book cover I shared 
which is for a short story called The Siren's Song. Okay, let's see what it does. And I will say this book cover was actually generated using ChatGPT4. It was a big mess. I actually had to take it into Photoshop and make quite a bit of changes. I'm still not happy with the text, but here we go. And the area Maria Miles is actually one of my pen names. So let's see. Mesmerizing world where myth and uh, reality intertwine. Enthralling story and first installment of the Legends of Mythos Hollow. So it actually read Legends of Mythos Hollow right here, book one. Okay. It weaves a tale of mystery, magic, and an ancient curse that could alter the fate of an entire town. Very cool. Interesting here. So we've got a siren's curse. Okay, cool. I might actually write this finally. I have a habit of creating book covers and then never writing the book. Okay, so let's, I'm going to hop over into another browser and we're going to go into Katie Spy. So give me one moment. Okay, here we are in my other browser and I have cleared cookies and all my uh, data out of there. So let's go ahead and click the button. Okay, and so I am not logged in here. And let's go and find something interesting. I feel like going to Mystery Thriller and Suspense. And let's go to Thrillers. And let's take a look. I want to do something with a biological thriller. I'll go with medical. Yeah, let's go with the medical thriller. And... We'll come up here and give it a minute to pull the data. And I'm actually going to have it pull the data for the top 40 books. So we got to give it a moment to go. We'll go ahead and get the top 40. And for those of you who this is your first time seeing, this is Katie's Spy. And I enjoy using this tool, especially when I want to do it any kind of writing to market. If I want to know that there's a market for what I'm writing, uh, I like to use this tool for that. So I'm going to come up here to Insights. I'm going to come down to Key Success Factors Fiction. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And we will hop back over and grab a new ChatGPT instance here. And I will pop this in here. Now, I don't like this part here. I always just swap out that ending text to give me five book series ideas, including series title, tropes, and series description. And let's go ahead and send this. And we can see that it is... Oops. It's going really fast. Okay. Okay. So comprehensive report on best-selling medical thrillers. We've got patterns, trends, and similarities. Medical and psychological elements. Strong and unforgettable detectives and protagonists. Twists and unpredictability. Setting and atmosphere. Series structure. Okay, so it's actually looking at the similarities between all of these books. And it's I have a feeling it's mostly looking at the title of them because I don't know how much Amazon data it has access to, if any, of that. So we've got some book series ideas here. The Biohazard Chronicles. We've got the Neurosurge series, Forensic Pulse series, MedTech Conspiracy, and the Silent Scalpel series. These sound terrifying. I would not want to write any of them of these. Let's see. I'm just looking here at these names, Kate Bennett. I've seen some Bennett's. I really haven't seen any Kate's. Ian Harper. We've got Sarah Mitchell. Alex, I've seen quite a bit. Alex Mason. And then we've got Emily Warren. Emily, I've seen quite a bit. It's one of those AI names as well. Not as bad as like an Ava. It really likes the name Ava. Interesting things here. I have no 
interest in finding any of these things. The real reason I picked the medical thriller is because we are now going to do a, let's see, what did I decide to do? We are going to do a genetic engineering thriller. This genetic engineering thriller prompt comes from Miracles. And I'm not sure which book it came from. She has two of them that are on thrillers. And I will link it in the uh, video description which book it came from when I remember. I will go ahead and pop that in there. Here we go. So again, genetic engineering thriller. And we'll let it go. Okay, so we've got the title. Gene Code. The tagline in the helix of creation, every strand of truth entwined with peril. That's pretty cool. The genre, again, genetic engineering thriller. Tone. Theme. We've got some world building. Tropes. Ooh, mad scientists. Genetic aberration. Scientific breakthrough. Ethical dilemma. We got manipulated nature, scientific hubris, and forbidden knowledge. Dr. Eleanor Graves. Now that is definitely a not AI name. I have never seen an Eleanor. I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, so we have this is a bit on the uh, vague side. So we're de we would definitely have to uh, dig in and get specific in. If you will remember with these prompts from Miracle, they are actually built to be serial fiction. So we've got episodes, we've got episode one, logline, synopsis, characters, supporting characters, we've got antagonistic force, we've got some narrative devices, multiple storylines, we've got A, B, and C stories. Okay, so we've got season one here. And then we've got episode one. So then we would just prompt it. Okay, so this is what happens in episode one. This is happens when episode two, three, four, as far as you want to go. And let's just ask it, what are some ideas for things that can happen? In seasons two and three. So we've got season two, the Chimera Code. And it looks like we have some new adversaries. And it went really fast. Evolution of technology, additional ethical dilemmas, and expansion of the conspiracy. A quest for redemption. So it looks like Eleanor is on a redemption journey. So it's giving us some updates on our major story arcs. And then season three, the genesis of the future. So it looks like maybe we are now going to have a global issue or in an international conflict. Uh, rise of the order. Oh, okay. So it looks like her family is going to be getting involved as well as a protege. There'll be a confrontation. And it looks like a climactic battle. And Interesting, we will be focusing on rebuilding the society. And also here's some more additional updates on the major story arc. So it looks like it's it's ending the the arc, like the serial arc here. And then if you wanted to take off in another direction, maybe with different characters or something else, you could go from here. So that's fairly interesting. But again, I'm noticing that and it might just be because there's a lot of people who are testing it out right now. And it also could just be it's trying to be much quicker. Or if there's just a lot of content here. It's really or we're getting back some stuff that is it's pretty lean. I I expect maybe a little bit more. But come to think about it, if you're using ChatGPT4, you have a tendency to get things back that are really intensely heavy on the description at the beginning but by the time it gets to the end it's it almost acts like it's running out of context and the stuff at the end is usually very anemic so i'm, I'm interested to see 
how this continues to work, this version, ChatGPT 4.0, and if we see the consistency. So I'm going to go ahead and end here for today. And we'll be back tomorrow. We will be adding this ChatGPT 4.0 to Novel Crafter. And we'll be using it in chat. And we will also uh, see what it'll do writing prose as well. So you guys have an amazing evening. I look forward to connecting with you guys again tomorrow. So happy writing. And keep the robots happy. Because pretty soon they'll be our overlords.